Hey, First Baptist, fire up the Keurig. It's time for Coffee with Chris. guys, today we're going to talk about an issue that I had a lot of questions about when I first became a Christian. I actually had a lot of misunderstandings about as I entered Bible college and seminary and was preparing to be a pastor. And just over uh, the course of my study and preparation for ministry, I realized, you know, a lot of other people may have questions about this as well. So today we're going to talk about a theology of church buildings. I can remember when I first became a Christian, I was involved in a, a church that was very old fashioned, very traditional. And you know, I, I remember being confronted as a young Christian walking into the sanctuary because, well, I was wearing shorts and I should not go into the sanctuary wearing shorts. Or there were other times when I was told to take off my hat because I was in the house of God. And I began to think of the church building itself almost like a temple. And you know, God was present in that building. Well, the problem was when I began to study the Bible, I began to realize that actually wasn't the case. And I just had a misunderstanding of how, about how God manifested his presence in the world around me. So what I wanna to do today is just talk a little bit about those issues because it's helpful for all of us to grow uh, in these areas, especially as we think about our, uh, what we call our sanctuary or the worship center, which is actually a multi-use building that gets used in a number of different ways. So go all the way back to the Old Testament and you start out and you think about the presence of God and places for God. Uh, this was significant in the Old Testament. You see God naming different areas or the people of God naming different areas after something that God had done significantly in their midst or in their life. And well, a lot of times what you'll see are individuals, especially in the book of Genesis, setting up altars and that's where they would make a sacrifice to God. And so that kind of became associated with the presence of God. You fast forward a little bit in the Old Testament and the history of the nation of Israel after God redeems the nation of Israel from Egypt and they're wandering around in the wilderness, there's actually what's called a tabernacle or a giant tent that would follow God's people as they traveled around in the wilderness. And so you could see this a uh, pillar of fire at night or a cloud by day that would hover over the tabernacle. And it was just a reminder that God was in their midst, God was in their presence. And when they would pack up and move to a new location, they would pack up the tabernacle and follow them, but they would follow that cloud. And so there was a constant reminder that God was in their midst, God was in their presence. And of course the tabernacle pointed forward to the temple. After uh, the Israelites inherited the promised land and they established themselves in Jerusalem, God God gave them very specific directions and they built a physical building called the temple. And so instead of the tabernacle traveling all over the place with God's people and being a constant reminder of God's presence, they now began to view the temple as the place of God's presence. And so the people of uh, God, the nation of Israel, they would travel to Jerusalem and travel to the temple in order to make sacrifices and worship. Now, one of the things that we know from studying the Bible is that everything with the Old Testament sacrificial system and the tabernacle and the temple, all of those things actually pointed forward to the sacrificial work of the Lord Jesus Christ. Every single one of those things pointed to our Lord and Savior. He actually fulfilled the Old Testament sacrificial system. So once Jesus Christ died on the cross, the sacrifice, the Lamb of God without blemish, once he died on the cross and rose from the grave, the need for the temple was taken away from us. And so now there's a shift in the New Testament. No longer do we think about the temple as the dwelling place of God. Now we think about uh, God dwelling or the person of God taking on human flesh, Jesus Christ, the God man. We see the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, not dwelling in a building, but dwelling in our bodies as individuals and even dwelling in the church, which is the body of Christ. And so God's no longer dwelling in a temple, he's no longer dwelling in a building, now he's dwelling in the people of God as individuals where the Holy Spirit dwells within us, but also in the church, the body of Christ. And so the, the, the manifest presence of God is experienced in very significant ways when God's people gather together physically. And that's why we make such a big deal about the importance of being in worship on Sunday. But it's important to remember the church, which is the body of Christ, is a people and it's not a building. So this worship center, the sanctuary, whatever we choose to call it, 
is not a replacement for the Old Testament temple. God does not dwell in this building. He dwells in our hearts and he dwells amongst us as a people. And so it's important for us to understand that buildings are helpful, but they're not essential and they can be multi-use. There are churches in Africa that don't even have a building. They, they meet under a tree. There are church plants in America that, that don't have a building. They meet in a, uh, a rented recreation center or they meet in a school and there's, there's nothing significant about that building. It's not the, the building itself per se, it's the people that are gathered in that building in a certain time and a certain place. And so church buildings are extremely important. They're a visible presence in the community. They give us an opportunity to gather together to worship. And let's face it, I mean, our church is so large, we can't even gather in the same building together at one time. It would be very difficult for us to all gather in someone's living room. And so we celebrate the fact that we have a building. We've invested a great deal of money in having a building, but we always want to keep uh, a certain perspective about our building. It's important, but it's not essential. The building is not the dwelling place of God. God's people are where he dwells today. The Holy Spirit of Christ dwells within us as individuals and dwells with us as we come together as a people. And that's extremely important. So uh, on Sundays, you'll notice a lot of times, especially when we're not social distancing, that I will call people forward to uh, the stage area as we end our sermon. And it's not because that is an altar. Although in, in Baptist vernacular, we've tended to call those altar calls. Uh, the front of the auditorium, the, the front of the stage is not an altar. God is no more present in this part of the sanctuary than he is anywhere else. The reason I ask people to come forward for prayer at the end of a service is so others in our church can see, here's someone in my fellowship, here's someone in my family, here's someone uh, that I have covenanted to walk with uh, in grace who wants his brothers and sisters in Christ to pray for him, who wants her brothers and sisters in Christ to pray for her. And so what happens is at the end of the service, if the Holy Spirit has confronted you with a particular issue or you feel overwhelmed by something that's happened in your life and you just feel the need for your brothers and sisters in Christ to pray for you, you can come forward and what you're doing at that moment in time is just saying to others, I want my brothers and sisters in Christ to come lay hands on me and pray for me. Now right now, we're not laying hands on one another, but we are recognizing there's someone that's come forward for prayer, and as they come forward for prayer, several hundred people within our congregation are lifting them up before the Lord. And what's, what's so amazing about that is, I don't have to know what's going on in their life because I know the Lord does. I can just begin to pray for that individual and whatever challenge it is that they're facing and however the Holy Spirit is working in their hearts. And, and because of our understanding of what a church building is and what a church building isn't, it actually allows us to use our facility in myriad ways. So on Monday nights when we're not in pandemic mode, we actually have uh, a ministry called Center Shot and we have a bunch of kids that show up with their parents. We take all the chairs out of our sanctuary and they practice shooting bows and arrows, right? Ever since the Hunger Games and since we live in an area that loves to hunt, there are boys and girls that want to learn how to shoot a bow. And so we've been using that as a platform just to share the gospel and to uh, share the stories of Jesus Christ. And so on Mondays, it's not uncommon when Center Shot is meeting to have between 40 and 50 kids in here with volunteers and targets set up on either side of the auditorium and learning how to shoot their bow and arrow. Now. Our facilities team isn't thrilled when they have to patch an occasional hole, but we're okay with that because we're using our building in a way that allows us to build relationships with those in our community. On Wednesday nights, uh, coming back soon, we hope, uh, you know, in the past we have had meals and we meet right here in our auditorium. And so we take all the chairs out and we roll in a bunch of round tables and we put chairs around the tables and we have someone prepare a food in the kitchen that's right behind the sanctuary and we all gather for a meal. And it's okay to eat in, a, in this auditorium because again, it's not a replacement for the temple. It's a building that we've constructed that allows us to gather together in one place at one time. So you think about the early church, they did not have church buildings. And as soon as Jesus Christ died and rose again, the temple was really obsolete. God now dwelt among his people, which was the church. 
And the early church met in their living rooms and they met in large common areas. And so in many ways, you can kind of think of this building as a large living room. This is where, or a large family room. This is where our family gathers to fellowship. This is where our family gathers to encourage one another. This is where our family gathers occasionally to share a meal. This is where our family gathers to hear the preached word of God and to allow him to speak to us. And he may do that through my sermon. He may do that through uh, Pastor Jeremy's sermon. He may do that from the, through the lyrics of a song that Pastor Jonathan's take, uh, shared with us. He may do that from a scripture reading or a prayer or something like that. But this is not, again, a temple. It's a building where God's temple gathers because this temple today is the church, which is the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is you and me. So on Sunday, there's nothing wrong with you bringing a hot cup of coffee into our worship service. On Monday, there's nothing wrong with a bunch of kids bringing their bows and arrows and shooting in targets in what is really the largest building in Middleburg. On Wednesday nights, there's nothing wrong with rolling in tables and sharing a meal and having a prayer meeting, which is immediately followed by choir practice. As a matter of fact, if we wanted to, we could put a bookstore in the back we wouldn't violate any commands of God. Um, and so what about Jesus overturning the, uh, the tables and running the money changers out of the, the temple? The reason Jesus was upset with that is because the money changers were making money off of those who came to worship. And they were actually, because of their approach to doing that, they were preventing people from coming and worshiping God. So rest assured, I'm not saying we're ever going to have a bookstore, but if we did, it would be a not-for-profit bookstore. We would just be charging enough to cover the cost of having those resources on hand. If we ever sold t-shirts or something like that, it's not to make money, it's just to cover the cost of that so we can continue to provide more ministries in our future. But I thought that would be just a helpful conversation for us to, to have over a cup of coffee because I can remember having a tremendous understanding about that. And, you know, it's, it, I thought it was sinful to wear a hat into the church building. Why? Because I thought God dwelled in that building. And the truth is God doesn't dwell in that building. He dwells in me. God doesn't dwell in that building. He dwells amongst my people. So when you pull onto our campus or you walk in the doors of this fantastic auditorium, or even if you go into our kids building or our office complex or our theater where our students meet, just remember this. Men and women of God have sacrificially given to the kingdom of God through the ministries of First Baptist Church for decades to make all of these buildings possible. And so we take good care of them. We take great pride in them. We're very thankful for them. And we've been handed this tremendous gift that we need to take care of and pass on to generations who will follow us. And so there may be a time in the future when we have to make a change to one of our buildings or build a new building, but it's not because we think God is blessed by the size or number of our buildings. It's just because we want to minister to as many people as possible. Thanks for having a cup of coffee with me. Hope you have a great day. I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. God bless.